Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be showing you how we can use this Raspberry Pi Pico with this tiny mini amplifier from uh, Adafruit to play an MP3 file. We're gonna use CircuitPython on this Raspberry Pi Pico to play a just a sample MP3 file. And we have got, so this is this right here is another plug that you, I'm gonna to have to solder that into. And these are some pins I'm not gonna actually use, but I, I, you, you solder that plug that I showed you into the amplifier there and you use that to connect to this speaker wire right here. So I also purchased this uh, mini speaker off of Adafruit. So the speaker and the amplifier were purchased from Adafruit and the Raspberry Pi Pico, I forget if I purchased it from Adafruit or from Amazon or wherever, but you can get those pretty much wherever. So any case, yes, yeah, so this is another view of these components here. So from a different angle. So this is how that little plug connects to the amplifier. And if you see, um, if I can get the camera to focus right, you see the wires actually stick in there. And um, so once I solder those two pins into the amplifier, um, there's two, two holes in that little plug with screws that let you uh, connect the speaker wires. But you'll, you'll see that a little bit later. Now these pins can connect onto this uh, amplifier like this. And uh, apologies for the focus here. But um, yeah, it can connect like that. I could actually break one of those pins off too, but I'm not actually not gonna use these. So <clears throat> what, I, what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna solder some wires to the uh, amplifier. But before I do that, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to, in just a minute, oh yeah, so th there's the solder that I'm gonna be using and the wires I'm gonna be using. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you how I install CircuitPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. All right, so we're installing CircuitPython on this Raspberry Pi Pico. Here's the download site. Um, I'm going down to the version nine, the alpha version and downloading that. See here, it, we see it downloaded. And now to get it installed on this Raspberry Pi Pico, we hold the button down right here, the boot cell button, and that's gonna boot it up in a mode that we can uh, will allow us to drag the files over. So you hold the button down, then plug the USB cable in and we're going to cut over here to right here. We're going to drag over the downloaded file onto that disk that was mounted as RPI-RP2. That was our Raspberry Pi Pico. So yeah, just drag that circuit Python over and we see the little indicator here shows us that it has completed. And so we look over here and we see it's unmounted and it's going to remount as circuit Pi. So that circuit Pi drive there is where we'll copy all of our circuit Python code. So we see it has an empty lib directory there, and that is okay. Now here we see I have actually soldered on the wires to the amplifier, and I've actually soldered on that connector. And from this angle, you can actually see the, the little screws on that connector. We'll show you how we set those up in a little bit. Um, also, <clears throat> the wires that I soldered to the amplifier, I've actually plugged them into the breadboard. Um, I'm going to actually solder those directly to a different Raspberry Pi Pico later, but for now, for testing, I'm gonna have one end soldered to the amplifier right here. See, I have those soldered in. <clears throat> and I'm gonna have the other ends of the wires just plugged directly into the breadboard. So uh, yeah, you can see I didn't do the best soldering job, but it is working. It, it's an okay, kind of okay soldering job, but it is working and it's totally fine. So yeah, you can see there, that's where the speaker wires would plug in. And here we are, we're gonna actually install the software on this, right? So we're gonna copy over code, and then we're gonna copy over that slow.mp3, which is what was provided in the sample from the Adafruit instructions. So if I didn't mention previously, I'm actually following the instructions provided on the Adafruit blog, <clears throat> but I'm doing I'm changing things a little bit, and I, I have some you know notes based on my personal experience and stuff. So, anyways. Yeah, here it is um, all connected up. There is the speaker. You see how the speaker connects to that little connector there. And uh, there are tiny little screws that you uh, you basically plug the speaker wires in and tighten these tiny little screws. There's my the HACO or HACO uh, soldering station that I used to solder this. And now I have uh, cut away to the other Raspberry Pi. And this is me having soldered. I didn't actually record myself soldering in this instance. But I basically, yeah, I soldered those wires directly to a Raspberry Pi. Notice this Raspberry Pi Pico does not have the pins on it to connect to a breadboard. But uh, anyways, yeah, I soldered it directly to the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to show you how we can play this in just a second here. So I'm, I'm going to plug it on, plug it, and it's going to play the MP3. It plays it once, not in a loop. 
So I'm gonna unplug it from my PC and plug it back in. Yeah, so that was a, just a short little clip, but in any case, um, now I'm gonna bring over the other Raspberry Pi Pico. Yeah, so you can see these are the two Picos side by side. The one on the breadboard has a bunch of pins soldered to it so it can fit onto a breadboard easily. And this one has no pins soldered to it. So this is the one I'm gonna use for quote unquote production use. I'm gonna put it in a nice little project box. Now here we, we see I have the same Raspberry Pi Pico connected up here and um, yeah, you see I soldered, not, not the best soldering job ever, but I have soldered on a switch, a power switch here, and a little battery holder right here. So, uh, and apologies again for the focus of the camera. But uh, yeah, so I've got those soldered on. So I, I can now power this using batteries. And there we go, we have some batteries in it now. And um, yeah, we're gonna try this out with batteries. So flip the switch here. And if you're curious about any of the things you see in this video, any of the parts or anything, I'm gonna to try to include links to where you can buy these in the description of this video, so check those out. But um, also, yeah, so anyways, this is the, uh, the whole project removed from those uh, clips. So just sitting here on my desk, here's the batteries, here's how I soldered everything together and everything. So we're, we're gonna give this one more test before uh, we're done, but uh, yeah, just taking a quick, quicker, closer look at like the soldering joints and stuff like that. But um, yeah, this is basically what the project looks like. And we're all also gonna put this in kind of a hack together or project box in a little bit. But uh, let's give this another try. And here is the project box that I threw together. I made this with uh, cardboard and duct tape. And here I have it all crammed inside there. So I'm going to have to kind of pull that stuff out if I ever want to change the batteries or, you know, connect it to the USB port to change the song or the code or anything. So it's not, it's, it's suboptimal, but it's, I think this looks kind of neat. So here it is all taped together. Got a switch on one side and the speaker on another. I thought this was pretty neat. Not a permanent project box, but it, it looks pretty cool, I, I think. But um, yeah, I'd like to 3D print something for a more permanent solution. And I have a lot of other um, improvements I'm planning on making to this whole project. But uh, yeah, anyways, this was loads of fun. Um, in the future, I'd kind of like to add a sensor to this. I'd, I'd like to change it to not play music. Instead, I'd like to play it like a bird sound or something. So uh, that way the sensor could uh, basically could like play a bird sound on kind of a, a kind of repeat intermittently every however many minutes. And uh, if the sensor senses anybody nearby, um, it, like the motion sensor senses any motion from any, anyone nearby, it'll shut that process off and be silent. But then if it doesn't sense any motion, it'll start playing the sound intermittently. So it'll be kind of like a, you know, funny, just a funny uh, thing to do. People will have a hard time finding it and stuff. I, I don't know, I just thought it was kind of a funny thing to do with an electronics project. So kind of something I, I, I'm planning to do with this. I want to make a newer, better version with sensors and a uh, different, I, I want to have code that loops and is on a timer and uh, uh, do a bunch of other modifications like that. So I, I have some interesting ideas to play around with and I, I kind of hope to do that in the future. So yeah, stay tuned for that. If I do do that, I'm going to make another video on it. Um, I don't know when I'll do that. I have a ton of other videos I'm going to make first. Um, speaking of which, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button because we have a lot of other great content, a lot that we've put out already and a lot that we're going to put out in the future. So if you want great tech content, including coding, um, hardware, software, Linux, um, servers, you know, har all, all sorts of great tech stuff, if you want that in your YouTube feed, definitely hit the subscribe button and also hit that little bell icon so YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. Uh, might want to give me a thumbs up and definitely leave a comment down below if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, anything you want to say. If, if you know something that I don't know, just leave a comment down below. But that is about it for today. So uh, hopefully this, it, hopefully you found this interesting. Maybe this helps someone. But um, yeah, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.